Assalamu alaikum wa If I can please ask the brothers to come this. We're not around Kaaba yet, so the sisters can sit over there, inshallah. Allah khair. Bismillah. I think you might need to connect this something. Yeah. We have a medical segment, inshallah. But sisters, inshallah, you may come to the front, inshallah. Yeah. At the meantime, if you can just, inshallah, say salam to your brother, inshallah, next to you. Bismillah, say salam to the brother, inshallah. Probably you haven't seen each other before. Alhamdulillah. Salam how are you? Okay, alhamdulillah. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa sirli amri wa hlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma inna nasaluka an tatakabbala minna jami'a amalina ya rabbil alameen. Wa kama jama'atana fi hadha liyawm, nasaluka an tajma'ana fi aljannah. See Allahumma ameen. So, um, you know, subhanallah, the, the time is extremely short and there are a lot of things to cover. So alhamdulillah, I'm honored to, to be accompanied by my dear brother, Sheikh Mubin Kamani, inshallah, he's going to uh, also be with me in this workshop, inshallah, to make sure that uh, uh, it is as efficient as possible, inshallah, rabbil alameen. So uh, I was talking to, uh, <laughs> to Sheikh Mubin before, you know, just kind of coordinate for the workshop and for this mini seminar, and I was like, Sheikh, you know what, well, I feel like people and all of us, after going through, you know, all of this craziness for the past week, we, we do not need, like, imams to talk. We need therapists. Wallahi. We need therapists to talk to us. What a roller coaster, subhanAllah, right? I literally just got my visa, like, an hour ago. Right? An hour ago. Call him, but, Sheikh, please, please. No, please, please, go ahead. An hour ago, Right? And subhanAllah, people, I know that some of you sitting here are still going through this. So now, who is going for sure, inshallah? I mean, nothing is at that point, not, nothing was sure. <laughs> who has the niya, inshallah, like that? Who has the advanced niya to go, inshallah? Allahu Akbar. It seems like sisters have more luck, mashallah. I'll be probably one of the application, okay. Mashallah. So confirm the flights and everything, alhamdulillah. Taib, next question. Who is, who is going the fourth? July 4th, okay, okay, where are you guys flying from? JFK? JFK, so bismillah, mashallah, I'm the only one going from Los Angeles. You have to go back, you know, like subhanAllah to be strong, you have to go back and then push more forward, Allah al -Musta So, alhamdulillah, let's everybody say alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. So what, what has been happening to us is, is, is it never happened to anybody before, right? This roller coasters of emotions and anxiety that and is that from here, brother? Is that from here? And the anxiety and the stress that everyone has been going through, well, it never happened before, Akhwan and Akhwati. That's why I'm telling you this: that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will reward you immensely, inshallah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will multiply your reward. Don't don't go with that. You know that just to go in like anybody else, like that those lucky ones who went before. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept from them. But this time is very, very unique. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, he, he, you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested your patience in so many ways. Every step on the way, subhanAllah, there was a test. And we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. We're just going, Bismillahi, Majreha, wa Mursaha, and Ya Allah, take care of us. And subhanAllah, this is Hajj, right? This is Hajj. And whenever, whenever I reflect and I think about this, what comes to my mind is as Sayyida Hajar radiallahu anha huh? wa Sayyidna Ismail radiallahu anha, right? Subhanallah, she's in the desert and Ibrahim alayhi salam, he's just throwing the whole family, they're leaving them in the desert, not knowing what is going to happen, and said, Ya Allah, take care of them. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're going and we're saying, Ya Allah, take care of all of us, right? So, Ikhwani, again, for the sake of time, the first segment of this workshop 
it's going to be basically a mental, um, spiritual preparation. And then, inshallah, the steps, the practical steps, uh, Sheikh Mubin is going to walk you through, inshallah, what to do and, and so on and so forth. I am not worried about how we're going to perform a hajj because, inshallah, steps are, are easy, inshallah, and there are a lot of resources. But now the most important thing is how to prepare yourself mentally and spiritually. You do, this is the one thing you don't want to lose at all. Because if you go there and you're not mentally and spiritually prepared, you know, with all Allah, Alam, the hassle that might happen, the uncertainty that might happen, you might lose your hajj because of that. So you need to ask yourself a question right now. Why am I going for hajj? I will pause. I will let you write one thing in your phone, inshallah. Why I am going, okay. I am going for hajj because... You can write in your phone, you can just serve in your head. Okay. So you know your goal, alhamdulillah. I am going for hajj for so many reasons. I am going for hajj because, ya Allah, I want my sins to be forgiven. This is my one opportunity to have my sins forgiven. If you go hajj, alhamdulillah, without any wrongdoing, no evil, no arguments, as I was reciting, the Prophet said, you will come back as a new baby born, born baby, subhanallah. Brand new. Brand new, subhanallah. Can you imagine that? This is the, the mindset that all of us, ikhwan and akhawati, should go for hajj, inshallah, with. This way, everything will be easy for you. Ya Allah, I'm going to gain as much hasanat as I can. Ya Allah, I need to develop the taqwa. What is a wadu? We talk about the things that we should pack in our suitcases, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you what you should actually pack. He said, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَىٰ The best thing you can carry with you is to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be with you. You're saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ Go with this mindset, brothers and sisters, that you're coming to tell you, Allah, you know what, I could care less, the, the less about, about I, I call it mu'azzib. Not mutawif. I call it mu'azzib. You know mu'azzib? The one who tortured. You know? That's a mu'azzib. It's the same, you know? Mutawif. Mu'azzib. Ya Allah, I could care the less about mutawif and all in the nonsense that, that you know, has been happening, subhanAllah. Right? I could care less about none of that. The payment issue, the visa issue, I don't care about this. Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, that you selected me for that journey out of so many people, millions of people in the world did not have the chance this year. They never get the chance, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you. I want you, all of you and all of us to go, inshallah, with this mindset. Then all the hardships and difficulties and obstacles, they will be very smooth and very easy, inshallah. So why I'm going for hajj and the first thing we should have sincerity and the ikhlas lillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala I read one of the uh, story a sister went for hajj and subhanallah when she came back her daughter was still in the story she said when my mom came back she was completely different different woman completely different person completely she changed her life completely changed her akhlaq her behavior everything that everyone, you know, tries to backbite or um, gossip in front of her or basically uh, argue with her. She kept on saying, إنها واحدة, إنها واحدة. It's only one, it's only one, it's only one, it's only one. And then when they asked her, what do you mean it's only one? She says, only one hajj and I am not going to waste this hajj. And she died upon that. Subhanallah. So that to yourself, it is one hajj. It is one opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. So seize the opportunity to the best. So this is basically uh, the, the first thing, sincerity and the ikhlas. Lillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. The second thing, ya khwani and akhawati, the, uh, you know, the, 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 tip I wanna, the second tip I want to share with you is sabr. You will need a lot of sabr during hajj. A lot of sabr. There will be, you know, alhamdulillah, this year, it's, it's, it's going to be better because less people. So alhamdulillah, somehow we're, we're lucky. Less people, only one million. Right? Before, how many millions, Sheikh Mubin? How many millions before? Four million. 
So there are three, basically only one million, and imagine being around four million. So now we have a million people. But does it mean that there, there are not going to be any obstacles or difficulties or hardships? 100%, you will find people coming from everywhere, right? You will find someone coming from, you know, the farthest village in Egypt and India and Pakistan and Syria and Iraq and here and there. They didn't speak different languages. They, they were raised and they grew up in different environments. They will be around you. People are going to be pushing you, right? The, 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 so basically, lower your expectation, right? Yeah? When we do the premarital counseling, we tell young people, before getting married, lower your expectation. All right? Don't have high hope, right? That you're going to wake up each other in the morning, I mean, wait each other in the morning for Salat al-Fajr and spray the water and all of these things, right? And you're going to be for muttaqim, both of you. Just lower your expectation. And the same thing for Hajj. Before you go, you need to have to bear in your mind that this is not your annual vacation. This is not an annual vacation. Wallahi, I'm telling you this. This is an act of worship, as if you're coming to the masjid to pray. You're not going to sleep in the hotel, right? I guarantee, like, majority are not going to sleep because you don't know who is going to stay with you, right? I'm going, and I have three gentlemen in my room, but I don't know where they're going to be from, right? Subhanallah, how are you going to sleep? You're not going to be as comfortable. So we expect that. People are with you in the room. You didn't choose them. At least when we used to go with travel agencies, huh? You could choose, right? I want this to be with me. I want this to be with me, right? But now, now it's, it's, it's hard. So you have to lower your expectation. Have a lot of sabr. I am not coming to argue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah, surah Al-Baqarah, Do not argue. Do not argue over fiqh. Everyone, mashallah, is the Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu over there. My brother, oh, you started from here. You do this. No, the sheikh said that. Sheikh, just mind your own business. We should all mind our own business, alhamdulillah. And then don't argue with anybody. This is not the time to argue. It's the time to perform the ibadah, and that's it. I am coming for one mission, and that's nothing else. I'm coming to have my sins forgiven. Doesn't matter how much it's going to cost me, right? And every time you do something that might invalidate your ibadah, remember what happened to you from Mu'azzib, from Mutawf. Remember that, that I'm not, listen, I am not going to waste that effort and this, you know, I, I was exhausted. I'm not going to waste that at all, right? So, sabr, wasta'inu bis sabri was salah, wasta'inu bis sabri was salah. So, number one, sincerity, ikhwan, al-ikhlas, al-ikhlas. Number two, as-sabr, number two, as-sabr, patience, extremely, extremely important. Number three is also, all of them are important, at-tawbah. التوبة تو الله سبحانه وتعالى اللهم توب علينا حتى نتوب يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا توبة يا رب العالمين توبة يا إخواني do not think that as soon as you go to the airport put your ihram on the miracle is going to happen Jibreel is going to descend upon you and you're going to be an angel right that's not going to happen it doesn't happen this way unless you have the intention to change and to get close to Allah سبحانه وتعالى nothing will change so I tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from tonight, from tonight, I miss salawat, it's time to start the five daily prayers, right? Because I'm going to go there, I don't want to be in the hotel or I want to be somewhere and, and basically waste the opportunity of praying five times in masjid al masjid al-haram, right? You have one salah equals 100,000 salah in Frisco masjid. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? So, and some people, they, they go and they're not realizing that. Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Duhr, al-Asr, al-Maghrib, and al-Asha, that's in the Masjid al-Nabawi or Masjid al-Haram or in Jama'ah, wherever you are, right? So it's Salah first. Any sin, any ma'asiyah, astaghfirullah, azza wa jalla, astaghfirullah, 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 because Allah knows your intention. Allah knows that you're going to change. Then you need to help yourself. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma biyanfusim. Allah doesn't change what's in people until unless they change what is uh, within themselves. Okay? Uh, are we ready for the for other part? It's working? Okay, alhamdulillah. I mean, even the laptop has some technical difficulties, subhanAllah. Tayyip. So we need tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why tawbah is important from now? I know someone says, you know, Shaykh, he just mentioned that if I go for hajj, Allah will forgive my sins. Why do I need to make tawbah from now? I'll tell you why. Because if you make tawbah now, and you die upon that before going to Hajj, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will write this hajj in your document, in your record, subhanallah. Can you imagine that? Because you already had the intention. You already applied for the application, yeah? You already went through all of this hassle. And you repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You died upon that. And guess what? Alhamdulillah, you have one hajj. Allahu alam. You have one hajj because of your tawbah. Can you imagine? So let's say, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. So we said, Al-Ikhlas, Ikhwan, I'm coming to have my sins forgiven. Say that out loud. I'm coming here to, to have my sins forgiven. Right? There is a, this is a psychological thing. Make yourself a bit, hear yourself out loud. That's why in Ramadan, the Prophet wasallam says, if someone, you know, curses or say, says bad words to you in Ramadan, say what? Inni sa'im, inni sa'im, inni sa'im. Because it reminds you. It reminds you that you're fasting. So remind yourself, I'm coming here to have my sins forgiven. I'm coming here to have my sins forgiven. Every single morning, every single time, you say that to yourself. So al-ikhlas, number two, as-sabr. Number three, at-tawbah. Number four, you cannot go to hajj while having some grudge and hatred and all of these disputes and conflicts and problems with the families and friends. You cannot have that. You cannot. Because we know already, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the uh, deeds will be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will basically, you know, reward everybody except, except the one who has some issues with his brother, her sister, his sister, his mother, right? But Sheikh, this is hard. You don't know what they did to me. It's no time for that. Just send a text message. I am going for hajj and I'm asking for your forgiveness. You never know if you're going to see them again or not. You never know. Just forgive. Just forgive. Don't you want your sins to be forgiven? Then forgive the servants of Allah if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive your sins. This is very important. Note this down. I am going to call people. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to initiate. The one who says salam first will basically get more reward. He'll be rewarded more than anybody else. Right? So this is very, very important, Ikhwani. You do not want your hajj to be paused or in, put in hold because you have some grudge and some hatred and some issues with your brother, with your sister, with your family member, or friends, and so on and so forth. You don't want this. You've been through so much, and you don't want to go there and miss that. That's, that doesn't make sense. Right? So ask family members and friends to forgive you. Make sure, not just to post on Facebook, like, hey, guys, I'm going for hajj. See you, see you inshallah. No, like, you know, actually talk to people. And it's okay to post also, no problem, right? The next one is also important. You're going, probably you're leaving your family behind. You're leaving your children, your brothers, your sisters. Sit with them, especially your wife, your children. Sit with them and talk to them. And have this conversation that we don't, we don't like to have. It's like, tell them, hey, I am actually going for hajj. I might not come back. There is a chance that we don't come back, right? Yeah? There's a chance. So make sure to advise them and give them nasiha. Stay on the path of Allah. To your wife, take care of the kids. You know, anything you wanted to, you know, you wanted your, uh, you want to instill in your kids, talk to your wife about it, right? To your brothers, to your sister, forgive me. Um, take care of your salawat, your abadat, your zakah, right? I will see you on, on the day of judgment. I'll see you in Jannah, inshallah. This is a conversation you don't want to have. It's, they will be like, dad, don't say that. Why are you talking like this? Don't make me cry. I'm not making you cry. I'm just telling you that this is, it might happen, right? So it's very important to have this kind of, you know, conversation with your family members before leaving, ikhwani, right? Tayyip, next, your debt, your debt, your debt. And here we're not talking about the, again, we're not talking about mortgage, we're not talking about the car payments, we're not talking about the ones that are scheduled, that basically you can, if you do not pay them now, if you go for hajj, these payments are not going to be interrupted, right? The debt that I'm talking about, the outstanding debt that it is, you have to pay right now. But instead of paying your debt, huh, you're going for hajj. So it is very important to pay off your debt. Not the credit card balance, if, of course, if you can, alhamdulillah. Not the mortgage, because obviously you cannot pay all of this together, right? If you can, alhamdulillah. But you don't want to go there and you have debt, because Allahu alam, Allahu alam, what is going to happen? 
what is going to happen. And then, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ refused to pray Salat al-Janazah, to lead Salat al-Janazah on someone because he had debt. Right? So make sure this is also clear before you go, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. The last thing, inshallah, I know time is extremely short, but really we want all of us to get into this mindset, this kind of spirituality that we want to have and build, inshallah. Last thing, ikhwani, al-wasiyah, 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 write your will. Write your will, inshallah, register it. Talk to a lawyer. I know the time is extremely short, but if you can just write it down for now, right? Make sure you're fair and, and you're, you're basically just with everybody. Your wasiya is extremely important. You want to go there and alhamdulillah, if, if something happens, uh, I'm clear. My kids, they have the haqq is there. My wife, she knows, uh, you know, she knows her haqq and the rights and so on and so forth. Right? And then finally, educate yourself. I would, I, subhanAllah, I, I really, really, really wish to go with the community here. But alhamdulillah, we're together still. Right? You know, to guide them and to learn from them and build this connection bond. But Qadallah ma shafal. Qadallah ma shafal. What happened, happened. Educate yourself, learn, and read about the rituals of Hajj. Inshallah, we're going to learn over here, but educate yourself. We don't know what kind of imams are going to be there, uh, religious leaders. We don't know. We don't know. And that's the, the funny part about the Hajj of this year. If somebody asks anything, we don't know. Right? Sorry for the inconvenience. We don't know. Right? Subhanallah. So make sure to understand the rituals. Dua, write a list of dua. Ask people, whoever wanna, you know, want me to make dua for him or her. Write the list of dua, inshallah. So when you go there, you do this. Learn some, some beautiful duas, easy, simple ones, inshallah. Again, remember sincerity, ikhlas. Remember, sabr, ikhwani, lower your expectations. Food is not going to be as good as here. You know, the water is not going to be over. The bathrooms are not going to be the, the most, the cleanest bathrooms. In the, they're not going to be like that. Have sabr, inshallah. And, and be strong because you're coming for a mission to have your sins forgiven. Innaha wahida. It's only one hajj. One hajj. Remember this lady. It's wahida, wahida, wahida. I am not going to waste it. Remember, at tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember to ask your family members and your friends for forgiveness, inshallah. Remember to sit with your family and give them nasiha in case something happens. And finally, write your own will, inshallah, your own wasiya. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us, ya Rabbil Alameen. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this journey, blessed journey for us and make it, ya Rabbil Alameen, means for us to enter Jannah al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. I'm going to hand it over to beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Mubin, inshallah. He has a lot to say. He was telling me that we need six hours to finish the workshop. I was like, come on. People, don't have, people are leaving yesterday. <laughs> I mean, leaving tomorrow. Okay, Sheikh, inshallah. Is it, it's not working? Okay, bismillah. In the next 45 to 50 minutes, inshallah, I don't know how, but we're going to attempt to cover Hajj. Um, and like Sheikh Salah said, that this is something that usually gets done over a span of four to five hours um, because, of course, it's a huge task. It's the fifth pillar of our religion, and there's so many variables that take place. Um, if so we'll jump straight into it, right, without wasting any time, without any small talk. Hajj, to understand Hajj is in three parts. The first part is Ahram, the second is Umrah, the third is the actual Hajj. Ahram. And there's a lot of question and answers that can come with Ahram. Um, I don't think we're going to take any question and answers due to time. But again, you, you know, you, I think Sheikh Salah has created a, a WhatsApp group. You can ask Sheikh Salah in the WhatsApp group or come to us afterwards. As for Ahram, 
if you are going to Medina to Munawara, and I don't even know if going to Medina to Munawara is allowed first this year or not, or if there is a package that allows Medina first, if you're going to Medina, then you actually don't have to worry much. Why? Because you will then purchase your ihram from Medina to Munawara. You will travel just normally, and when you're in Medina, you can purchase your ihram and wear your ihram uh, from there. Now, the ihram from men, of course, is different from an ihram from a lady. If you're going to Makkah to Mukarrama first, then your ihram you need to pack not in your check-in, but in your hand carry. Right? So not in your check-in, in your hand carry. And wherever your stopover is, so if you're flying, let's say for example, Qatar, then in, you know, when you stop over Qatar, you, Saudi, right? So, yeah, sorry, I forgot, yes. <laughs> Things have changed. Um, so, in that case, what you want to do is um, wear a haram on the plane, right? Now, a couple of things. If you wear a haram, don't make the intention until they announce now is the time to make the intention. So there's two parts of ihram. One is the physical garment that you're wearing, and the second is the state of ihram. Just because you have the physical garment on doesn't mean that you're in the state of ihram. To become in the state of ihram, there are a few steps that you have to take, and there are certain, some, some of these steps are mandatory, and some of these steps are optional, right? Once you put on the garment, wait until they make the announcement. When they make the announcement, you make these final steps, and those final steps are, number one, you make the intention of Umrah. And we'll talk about the different, three different types of Hajj later on, and you can decide which of the three that you would like to do. And it's usually based upon the package that you're taking and the days that you have in between. You know, I know Sheikh Salah is a 10-day package, mashallah, and in, you know, in that case, for Sheikh Salah, probably Hajj Kiran is probably be the best, but we'll go into those details. The Fakir package. That's uh, so So number one is the t intention, and we'll talk about the different intention. Number two is Talbiya. These are the two main things. Once you say these two main things, you would now go enter the state of Ahram. There is a Sunnah that you can, but it's not necessary, right? So once you have your garments on, wait until they make the announcement. When they make the announcement, at that time, you wanna make sure that you're not wearing anything that goes against your ihram. Now, what goes against ihram? Let's talk about the garment first. A common misconception is that your ihram cannot be stitched, right? People say that it has to be unstitched. Unstitched technically means it can't be stitched in the shape of your body. So it can't have arms and it can't have legs. However, any other stitching that's not in the shape of your body is permissible. So let's say, for example, if you would like to, if you're someone like me and, you know, a nun, right, you're mashallah tall, and the standard ihram may not fit you, so what you can do, and this is why I do it pretty much every year, I go to Joan Fabrics, I buy my ihram from there, I bring it home, I ask my wife to sew it down the middle for my bottom part, and now I have a cylinder shape. It's stitched, but it's not stitched in the shape of your body, and usually we wear something like this in the subcontinent, like a lungi, right? And this is much easier um, to wear, right? Um, so that's, that's your ihram, right? So we said that you want to keep it in your hand carry, you want, to, you want to wear it, wait until they make the announcement, at that time you make the intention, the intention, we'll talk about the three different types of intention later on, and you say the talbiyah, you say the talbiyah three times, labayk, Allahumma labayk, to the end three times, and now you are in the state of ihram. So now we were ta earlier we were talking about what can you not wear in ihram. In the state of ihram, any type of head covering must be removed. Nothing must cover your face, right? And for women, face must be exposed as well. For men only, for women, that's the only exception, that your face must be open. Everything else you can wear as normal. For men, the shoes that you wear, the, the foot bone, that must be exposed as much as possible. So ideally, if you have like flip flops, the, that, that has like two straps, that is the best um, kind of shoes that you want to wear, right? 
Besides that, you know, any, un any undergarments you'll take off. If you have to wear a brace, that's fine. If you have to wear a sleeve, let's say, you know, for, for your elbow or something like that, that's fine as well. Now, the question comes up that if I have to keep my face uncovered, what about a mask? And with the current situation, scholars get permission that, of course, you can wear a mask and they will not be penalized for having your face covered. Some other things that you cannot do in ihram. Right? Any type of fragrance that is put on with the intention to smell good, that isn't permissible. Right? So any type of, if I put on cologne, if I put on perfume, in the state of ihram, that is not permissible. If you put it on your body before ihram, before you make the intention, before you say the talbiyah, that is permissible. You can put it on your garment as well. You can put it on your ihram as well. So let's say before I make the intention, I put some itar or perfume on my ihram, and I put some on my body, and then I then make the intention, I then make the talbiyah, that's fine. Once you're in that state, you cannot apply anything after that. Now the question comes, what about washing your hands with soap, or using toothpaste. And the purpose of these few things, scholars say it's okay. Why? Because a person doesn't use soap to bring fragrance to their hand, but to clean their hand. And that's why scholars now, nowadays they take a you know, lesser stance. Yes? Hand sanitizer? It's fine. Right. Before, I, mean, I know scholars were a lot more strict with this, but because of, you know, how common you know, these things, and, and especially you know, um, this year and since COVID, um, th there is a lot of leeway that scholars now give permission um, to use hand sanitizers and stuff like that. The mask is important, the mask also they... Uh... Yeah, so wearing the mask, uh, tube, uh, toothbrush, right? Um, toothbrush, it's best not to. You can use miswak, but it's best not to. It, for me, it defeats a perfect be purpose because why you brush your teeth to get rid of that foul smell and to bring you know, a good smell into your mouth. That's the main purpose of brushing your teeth. So, but miswak is fine. Yes? Chapstick permissible. Chapstick is fine. Right. Let's move on. So that is, that covers ihram. Any questions about ihram? No, you do not have to have wudu in the state of ihram. It's not for. If you can, it's fine. If you don't, if you if you can't, then that's okay. Because if you're in Saudi Arabia and you're on the plane, you know there's not going to be a way for you to do so. Yes. Yes. So they they will announce that we are passing the miqat. Please say the talbiya, and at that time they will actually have they'll play the talbiya on the plane. Saudi Airlines will do this for sure. So actually, Saudi Airlines they have a place to pray in the back, yes. so you can't you can't Saudi Airlines. So Saudi Airlines has that one benefit. So do, do you want to take the question? Do you want to keep the questions at the end better, maybe? Because I feel like there are a lot of comments. yeah. Um, we haven't even started yet. Let's let's yeah, let's get, let's get going and then inshallah we'll get to it. Yeah. Right. The three types of Hajj. The three types of Hajj are Hajj al-Kiran. Hajj al-Kiran means to combine Hajj and Umrah together. Right. So you perform Umrah. You do not leave the state of Ihram. You perform Hajj and then you leave the state of Ihram. Right. So you're wearing Ihram for an extended period of time. And this usually um, is if your time in between is very short, then you might as well. So if you're going for a short package, like a 10-day package, in that case, you probably have a day or so. You know, one time we went um, and we had maybe like half a day in between, and you might as well do Kiran. And that's why everybody in our group, we did Kiran, because we only had a half a day in between. So it, made, it didn't make sense to leave the state of Ihram, then enter the state of Ihram. So just do Kiran there. Hajj al Tamattu is that you perform your Umrah. After you perform Umrah, we'll go through how to perform Umrah later on. But after you perform your Umrah, you leave the state of Ihram, you shave your head, or for sisters, you cut your hair, um, and then you exit out the state of Ihram, you put on your regular clothes, and then in the days of Hajj, when the Hajj days start, on the morning of the 8th, you put on your Ihram again, and you can do that a second time from 
um, inside the hotel, right? So that is. Yeah, it would definitely be Tamatu, right? Because you, don't, you can't go to Medina without leaving the city of Ilham. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a new, a new package, but... So don't wait. So if you're stopping at Jeddah Airport, if you're stopping at Jeddah... So we actually get Yeah. Then you have to do the matu. Yeah, then you have to do the matu. Um, but if there's somebody that's stopping over in Jeddah and then catching a flight to Medina, in that case, you don't have to wear a hum at that point. Yes? You don't have to. You can just do um, it, it, you, you wear your garment for, um, for hajj. And that's the third type of hajj. So the third type of hajj is hajj ifrad, which is only Hajj, and you don't do Umrah beforehand. Now, which one is better? It's up to your situation. Yes. When you come back, then in that case, you, would, you won't perform Umrah again. No, no. So which of these three are... Yes, sir. No, you, you, so if a person enters into the miqat without putting on the ihram and they have the intention of hajj or umrah, then there's a penalty on that person. Right? So if you enter into miqat, the boundaries, without wearing ihram, and you have the intention that you're going for hajj and umrah, in that case you have to, you have to give penalty. No, don't worry around from the beginning. Please don't worry around from the beginning. Don't worry around from, you know, JFK. Wear your regular clothes from JFK. In the middle, go change your ihram. Within the flight? Yes, within the flight. It will be, yes, absolutely. It's always like this. Then. They're going to announce a little bit early, inshallah. So. And not only... Sheikh, uh, question. Uh, what if some people say maybe from Los Angeles, uh, I'm traveling, so I tell everyone going from Los Angeles. Uh, in the airport, what if you just uh, put the lower uh, part, basically, of the piece of the haram uh, to make it easier yourself? I think that's probably making it more difficult. <laughs> you, you don't want to do that because, again, yeah, the lower part the lower parts are more you know, challenging part. It's harder, that's why. Uh, I wish, I wish we, you know, maybe, maybe after Isha, if we have a spare at home, I can show you guys how to put it on at home. No, you wear, you wear, the, you wear, for Hajj Tamattu, good question, you, when you put on your at from, uh, for Hajj, you do it from your hotel. Right? You, you don't have to go outside the Miqat. Right? Yes. Yes, since we fine. Right. So these were the three different types of Hajj. Let's move on. Right. Um, Tamatu is more rewarding, of course. Majority of people do that, but it depends on the package and the days, number of days. Yeah, so we we're, were talking about the people. Which, which of the three? Again, it depends on your package day. You know, Omar al was of the opinion that you should only do ifrat. He said that if you're coming, then you come for Hajj. If you want to come for Umrah, then go back and come again. That was, that was his opinion. So there's a mixed opinion. Whatever is best for your um, you know, your package or your travel, that's the best, right? Sorry? If you want to do extra umrah in between, let's say that you have, so there are certain days you can do umrah, and we'll talk about that later on. After the 8th, you can do umrah, but let's say you're going this coming Saturday, right, and you're in Mecca for f five days. You go, you perform umrah, you want to do another umrah, you have time in between, you go to Miqat, you go to Masjid Aisha, um, you put on your ihram, 
and you do Umrah again. You can do as much as you want, but on the eighth, no more, no more Umrah, right? Um, Ihram right here, yes. Yeah, sunscreen's fine, inshallah. Again, the purpose of the sunscreen is not fragrance. Wait, what kind of sunscreen are you talking about? No, a cream, yeah, a cream is fine. If you have like a visor, that's a different situation. If men can't wear visors, women can wear visors. So let's say that you, know, you, so you, you wear a visor, um, no, that, that's okay. Ahram, um, you know, when you wear ahram, the, the shoulders should be covered, but let's say if you want to get some air and you want to pull your arm out, that's fine. We're going to talk about when you perform umrah, um, that way you, have to, way you have to keep it you know, um, exposed. These are the slippers that we were talking about earlier. Um, I would say, if you're going to Hajj, invest in some good slippers. Um, I think a lot of the packages are uh, North American tents, correct? So if, you're in, if it says Mu'aisim, you're in the North American tents, you're, you're going to be walking a decent amount. Uh, my suggestion is go to Crocs, go to Ufus, um, go to you know a good buy yourself some good hide slippers because you're going to be walking in it a lot. Slippers like this, don't buy these, right? Otherwise, one they'll break. Number two, it will it will destroy your feet, right? Um, in your packing list, and maybe they might give it there, but Allah alam, you want to have a drawstring bag, a drawstring bag. You know, every hudge group. Previously, whenever they took a group, they always, always gave a drawstring bag. Why? Because it's best for your slippers. Right? If you're going to the masjid, you put your shoes in, you're, you're good to go. All right, let's carry on. Looking at the Kaaba. Right? Some things to know about the Kaaba. Um, of course, we have Hajar Aswad. We have the space that's between Hajar Aswad and the door. Again, all of this is blocked off at the moment, so, you know, you don't get that. You don't get a chance. Um, the, it's the place between. It's called Multazim. The Prophet ﷺ, when he came there, he opened his garment, upper garment, and put his chest to the Multazim made dua. Then, of course, you have the door of the Kaaba. You have um, Maqam Ibrahim. Maqam Ibrahim. Again, we we're going to talk about later on that you will perform two rakats. Do not pray two rakats there. Go behind, all the way behind, and pray behind it. You have the Hatim. The hatim, the half wall that you see over there, the, the purpose of the hatim is that the Kaaba initially wasn't the shape that we see it today. It was actually in a bullet shape. And at the time, the Prophet wasallam, the Prophet wasallam, you know, when he was, 20, when he was um, 35, they reconstructed the Kaaba. They didn't have enough funds. They made it in a cube shape. And they put the hatim to mark off what the, where the Kaaba is supposed to be. Allah alam, if it's open or if they're going to open the hatim, if they open the hatim, mashallah, uh, when we went in March, the hatim was closed off. Um, so, again, you can't, we weren't able to go there. The corner before, the corner before Hajar Aswad, so Hajar Aswad is that silver part, right? The silver part and the black stone in between, again, that was closed off when we went in March. Um, the corner before that is Rukri Yamani. The Prophet ﷺ, when he passed by Rukri Yamani, he would run his hand over it, and he would, after this, he would read the dua, Rabbana Taqabul Minna. We're going to talk about this when we get to the actual Umrah. Right? Now, let's break down Umrah. When you go into, when you get to Mecca, right? let's say you get to Mecca, my first Suggestion is, before you rush to the Kaaba, go to your hotel, get situated. Get yourself some food. Maybe if you want to even take a nap, that's fine. Right? Then go when you are fully awake and you're kind of rushed. Yes? Can you repeat the question? So the question is that can you cover yourself when you are, for men, when you're sleeping? Right, whether this is an Umrah or an Hajj, you can't cover your face and your head. Your face and your head has to be exposed. Right? So you can wear a sheet, but you can't put it over your head. Right? And this, this is not only here, but in, when you are in the tents, even then that you have to keep your head um, exposed. Yeah, it's on your shoulders, that's fine. Right. Once, you've get, once you've gotten some rest and you ate some food, go to the Haram. Now, 
Ideally, when you're going to the haram, the best thing to do is keep your gaze lower down until you can get as close as you can to the Kaaba. Right? So you walk in, once you get into the Mataf, right? once you get into Mataf, then. So actually, let me take a step back. In Hajj, so in Umrah, the past Umrahs that we went to in, in March and November, um, you have to have particular apps. There is Ittamarna and Tawakkalna, two apps. I think Tawakkalna is irrelevant now, but Ittamarna is still there. So they're, they're going to have you download these apps before you get there. When these apps are for booking appointments to go to perform uh, Umrah. So most likely, if that's still in play, they're going to tell you, you need to book your Umrah on the app. Once you book your Umrah on the app, what they will do is they'll have the ground floor blocked off and only people in the state of Ahram can go in. Right? So only people that are in Ahram that are doing their Umrah, they can go in. So you want to show them the app as you go in. <laughs> For that, make sure your phone is charged. Right? You know, and make sure you take your phone with you. Um, this past, in, in March when I went, my phone was charging in the room and I told somebody to bring my phone and he didn't bring my phone. So I just took a power bank and I flashed my power bank and then I said, okay. It was, there, was only, there, was a, there was no screen on there. And I, and I was like, yeah. um, so make sure your phone is charged. Otherwise, if the, if the cop wants, he can send you back. Once you get inside, like I said, keep your gaze lowered, get as close as you can to the Kaaba, back into a place where there's no rush and look up for your first sight. The hadith of the Prophet and Rasulullah says that the dua a person makes when they first glance at the Kaaba, that that dua is accepted. Now, majority of the scholars say that you should make dua that, oh Allah, let all of my duas be accepted. There are, some, there are some people that say, no, no, you shouldn't make that dua. Why? Because you're saying that your duas won't be accepted. Otherwise, you know, go ahead and throw that into your duas. Inshallah, make, may Allah make you ijab dua. Now, take your time. This part right here is actually very important. Don't skip over it. On your first glance at the Kaaba, how many of you are going there for the very first time? No prior Umrah, no prior Hajj. If you're going for the very first time, soak it in. Don't let anybody push you away. Don't, don't rush. There's no hurry. If you're hungry, that's okay. If you're sleepy, that's okay. This is what you came for. Let that experience kick in. Just look at the Kaaba and open your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once your final dua is done, once your first dua is done, you make your way to Hajar Aswad. Now, when you make your way to Hajar Aswad, for men, there are certain things that you have to keep in mind. When you are in the state of tawaf, when you're performing tawaf, your right shoulder must be uncovered. So in that case, you take your ihram, which is over your shoulder, you take it down and put it underneath your arm, right arm. And you don't have to worry about this. Why? Because if you are there, everybody will tell you, open your shoulder. Because everybody there has to, if you're in the state of haram, everybody has to you know, keep their shoulder open. So people will guide you there. The first three rounds around the Kaaba, if possible, so this right here is called istiba, to, put your, to expose your shoulder. And the first three rounds, if possible, men, so istiba is for men only, and the three rounds walking around the Kaaba, you want to walk with a bit of a swagger. You know, move your shoulders, move your hips, fast-paced walk. And the reason why this happened, the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted to show the, the non-Muslims, the Quraysh at that time, that the Muslims aren't weak. If you can't do it due to the amount of people that are there, that's okay. Right? Don't force them. You're like pushing people as you're walking just so that you can move your shoulders. That's only in the first three rounds. In the remainder four rounds, you walk normal pace, but your shoulder will remain uncovered. Right. So start with Hajar Aswad. At that time, you raise your hand towards the Kaaba. You can say, Bismillah, Allah Akbar. You make your intention of your Umrah, that you're starting your Umrah. Bismillah, Allah Akbar. Again, you won't be able to touch it. And just kiss your hands, and off you go. Right. The Prophet ﷺ, when he performed uh, uh, Umrah um, during 
Umrat al Qadha, he, he, he pointed towards the Hajar Asad with his stick and then he started his tawaf. Now, the question comes what should you say, what should you read during tawaf? Like Sheikh Salah said earlier, your preparation for Hajj, it's more than just knowing what you're going to be doing. But your main preparation for Hajj is focusing on what du'as you're going to be reading and what you'll be saying at what point. So your first du'a, first sight du'a, you should be already working on that. If you haven't yet, go out or you know, order on Amazon, buy yourself a diary, a Hajj diary. And in this the Hajj diary, I want you to do a couple of things. Number one, at the end of every day, jot down what happened. Jot down the feelings, jot down the emotions, jot down what you went through. Because for the rest of your life, if you don't capture it, you're just going to go through it and you'll forget it. In the same diary, I want you to write down your du'as. When I first see the Kaaba, this is what I'm going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I'm in Arafah, in the main part of my Hajj, this is what du'as I'm going to be making. Right? So, with that, I always say that in your tawaf, plan out seven du'as that you're going to read, one for each round. So, for example, one thing that I do, Prophet Allah, he says, of the dhikr, la ilaha illallah. The best of dhikr is la ilaha illallah. So one of my rounds, I'll just say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Second round, I would say, Durud upon the Prophet Allah wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. That's all I would do. The third round, I'll make dua for my parents. Rabbi rahmu ma kama rabbi an sagira. Rabbi rahmu ma kama rabbi an sagira. The fourth round, I'll make dua for my children and my wife. And again, that can be in any language that you feel comfortable. The fifth round, I'll make dua for risk, for knowledge. The sixth round, I'll make dua that Allah cleanses my heart. The seventh round, I make dua that Allah forgives me. Map out your seven rounds. Right? One thing I do is that I actually, before I leave, I tell my children so that they can be a part of Hajj, is to take seven beads and put it on a piece of yarn. And I tie it both sides and tie it to a keychain ring, the ring on a keychain. And I put that on my finger. And as I go upon each round, I move one of the beats to keep count of the seven rounds that I'm making. You can do this on your phone as well uh, to keep note. But a good way to keep note without the, the, the ring tasbih or an, your phone is to know what du'as you're reading. Right? That this round, this is the du'a I'm supposed to read. I'm reading this du'a. Now the next round, number four, this is the du'a I read. And you do your um, du'a like that. Up. Now, upon finishing your, yes. Sorry. Upon finishing, that's a bit loud. Uh, upon finishing your tawaf, you then will go to Maqam Ibrahim. Now, one thing that I tell people is that when you're doing tawaf, it's good to do tawaf as close as possible. Right? Why? Because you're here once in a lifetime. You might as well get the full experience. Right. If you want to shortcut it, then stay at home. Don't go. If you're going there, now if there's a reason why you can't, let's say you're claustrophobic, then that's fine. Do it from a distance. If you have someone elderly with you, which you know, I think there's an age limit this time, so you probably don't, but if you're injured or something like that, then do it from the outside. But if you can, do it as close as possible. When you're done with round number seven, before you end round number seven, slowly, slowly, gradually make your way out. Don't come out directly. And the reason for that is you're going to be hitting traffic. People are going to be trying to go and do the uh, tawaf and you're coming straight out. So gradually make your way out. Get to Maqam Ibrahim and after you get to Maqam Ibrahim stand back as much as you can and perform your two rakat of tawaf. Once you perform your two rakat of tawaf you will then go and is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu went and he drank from the water of Zamzam. And usually behind Maqam Ibrahim, they have a bunch of coolers for Zamzam. Go there, drink water. After this, 
you're going to go and do Sa'i. Sa'i, of course, is from Safa, Marwa. The Prophet ﷺ instructs us that in between with these green lights, the men only will run or walk at a faster pace. The women will walk slowly. You're going to start at Safa. Now, pro tip, I tell people that do not perform Sa'i on the ground level. Do not perform Sa'i on the ground level. Find a way to go to level three or four. If you perform Sa'i on the ground level, and if, again, if you're like Brother Nabil and you, you know, mashallah, you're fit, then go for it. Because there, there's going to be incline, there's going to be a decline, you're going to tire yourself out, you just sent the off. Not only that, but the crowd there is going to be a lot, it's going to be pretty hot. If you go to level three or four, it's pretty much empty. And the AC, alhamdulillah, feels amazing. And then when you're done, you, you, know, you just perform tawaf, you can aram say, enjoy your sa'i instead of it you know, being a drag. So I always say, you know, when we go, we take a group of like 100, 200 people, I say, wait, when there's no way we're doing the ground, we're going to find a way, everybody's going to go there, and aram said, you want to you enjoy the experience. So that's my suggestion. If you want to do it on the ground floor, alhamdulillah, go for it. You're going to start at Safa. Now, what should you read? Right? The verses that Sheikh Salah read earlier in the Safa, wal marwata min you can read that there. You do not need to go around. A lot of people do this. They go around the mountain. You do not need to do that. You just go to the foot of the mountain and then you turn back. You start from Safa and you go to Marwa that is one. Not back, one. One, two, three. When you finish seven, if you finish at Safa, then there's a problem. Right? You should finish at Marwa. Right? So finish at Marwa. During this time, if you're traveling with somebody, if you're traveling with somebody, let's say you're traveling with your spouse, you're traveling with your parents, I always say, don't do hajj with one another, but do hajj together. The difference, don't do hajj with one another, but do hajj together. And this is why I say that when you're traveling, when you're doing hajj with your spouse, Keep it that on to Safa, from Safa to Marwa, you make dua and your spouse says Amin. And Marwa to Safa, your spouse makes dua and you say Amin. But what if she makes dua against her husband? Is she going to say Amin to that? She's, if she's already making dua and she says, oh, they're making dua, then you got bigger fish to fry. All right, so you want to do Hajj, you know, with one another, together as one, right? Once again, there's nothing said for you to read. What do you do at Safa Marwa? Go there and say any dua that you can. It's good that you face the Kaaba. If you can face the Kaaba, you can face the Kaaba and you look at the floor, all the tiles are facing the Kaaba. Stop there, take some time, you don't need to go around. Just take some time, make some dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue your um, Safa Marwa. Now, once you finish seven, the, ir the ironic thing about it is that you have to do eight. The reason being all the hotels are on that side. So you're going to finish there, but you have to go back. All the hotels are on the other side. My suggestion is don't do it there. Go downstairs, go out of the haram, and walk from the outside. Why? Because there will be no crowd on the outside. You can easily go, and you won't have to worry about you know, the people that are doing sa'i at that time. Now, at this point... Your umrah is pretty much done. The only thing that is left is to cut your hair. To cut your hair, number one, you don't have to do much. Why? Because when you leave the haram and people see you leaving the haram, the barbers will come and grab you and take you to the barber shop. Right? They get, they get commission. It's, it's, it's a whole thing. They'll, they will come and grab you. You don't have to worry that, oh, where am I going to get my hair cut? They'll come and take care of that. Usually, depending on the season, you know, normally it's 10 rials, but it can go up anywhere 30 rials, depending on the season. In Hajj days, you know, it's like 40, 50 rials um, to get your haircut. So just make sure you have that type of um, money on you. Now, a couple of things. 
When you wear your ihram, if you have a lanyard that goes around your neck that has a pouch, that is the best thing. Right? If you look online, you should be able to find it. Or if you go to like Walmart and stuff like that and go in the travel session, you'll find a lanyard that has a pouch. The one that I take, I can even put my phone inside, I can keep my money inside, and then I put that underneath my ihram, and I, won't, I don't have to worry about safety. Right? Or let's say if you have a belt. If you have a belt, again, you can, it will hold up your ihram and you can keep your money safe inside. You do want to make sure you have money to, to that you can cut your hair after you perform your umrah. For the sisters, you can go to the hotel room, one sister can cut another sister's hair, and that's sufficient. For the sisters, you want to wrap it around your finger and snip. That's pretty much it. For the brothers, ideally, the Prophet ﷺ, he made two duas for a person who shaves his head, and then he makes a single dua for a person who cuts their hair. Both are permissible, it's completely up to you. Now, let's say, you, yes? No, you can't. <laughs> so, brother, actually, to, to answer your question, in, in, the, in, the, in the days of Hajj, if the first person gets their hair and they leave the state of Ihram, if the first person goes and get, leaves the state of Ihram, they can, they can cut other people's hair once they leave the state of Ihram. But you yourself can't take yourself out of Ihram by cutting your hair. Right? So in the days of Hajj, what we do is we actually, from here, we take our trimmers. One person will go to the barber, get his hair cut, then the other person will stand on the street and cut everybody, like, you know, cut my brother's hair. Yeah, cut their hair. Yeah. Yes. Then the second time, you're just symbolically just running your blade over. If you're like me, you're symbolically running your blade over both times. Or just shorten the first one and then leave and shave at the end. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just wrap around a finger, cut. Wrap around a finger, cut. Just keep doing umrah and come back with hair as short as possible. Just run a razor over it. Symbolically, just run a razor over it. Right. Yeah, so we'll get to that part. We'll get to that part of which days. Now, yeah, we'll, we'll, start, we'll start with Hajj. The days of Hajj. The days of Hajj starts on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. The, day, the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, um, this is called Yom Tarwiya. This is the day that you spend in Mina. Again, you're going to put on your ihram from the hotel room. And you're going to say your talbiyah, you're going to make your intention from the hotel room. Right? Now, yes? Um, we we, should, we yeah, can't yeah, we, we we can can share it. We can arrange that in Shalom. Right? So, on the 8th, you're going to go put on your ihram from the hotel. And then you, they'll transfer you to, to Mina. Once you get to Mina, you're going to pray five salahs in Mina. Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and the next day Fajr. If, for some reason, they don't allow you to pray that Fajr, that's okay. Right? Previous years when we went, they, have, they set a train time, and they give you a set train time. This is the time that you have to be at the train station. And some of the trains actually run from before Fajr time. Same thing. So if, if, if you're doing Hajj Tamattu, then you're putting on the ihram again. And like we said before, if, if that ihram, if, it has perf if it's perfume, that's okay. Um, from the hotel, you're going to wear your tura, you're going to pray your tura gods, you're going to make your intention. Now, when you make the intention, and I'll go all, over all three, if you're making the intention for ifrad, if you're only doing Hajj first, then you make the intention, Allahumma inni uridul Hajja. If you're making intention for Umrah, 
right? And then you're going to, you know, break into two parts. You make dua, you make intention, Allahumma inni uridu al-umrata, fayassirha li wa taqabal minni. And if you make dua for both, if you're making kiran, then you say, Allahumma inni uridu al-hajja wa al-umrata, fayassirhuma li wa taqabalhuma minni. That, that will be the intention. You say your talbiyah, you enter into the state of ihram, you go to Mina, in Mina you're going to pray your five salahs. What are you doing there? You're preparing. The whole purpose of Mina is to prepare yourself for the next day. The next day is the grand of Hajj. Now, in Hajj, there are a few things that are faraj. There are three faraj, three things that are mandatory, mandatory in Hajj. If these three things are not met, your Hajj is not complete. Everything else up and down, that's oh, fine. okay. We can give some sort of penalty, we can make some compensation and complete it. Though three things are number one, it's ihram, number two, it's arafah, which will be the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, and number three is tawafi ifada, or we call it tawafi hajj, and we'll talk about that on the tenth, or you can delay it if, if need be. So on the eighth, all you're doing is staying in Mina, you're doing your ibadah, you're preparing yourself. You know, have some sort of, you know, um, plan for that as well. This is how much Qur'an I'm going to read. This is the du'as I'm going to make. This is the athqa that I'm going to read. You know, maybe you can take the 40 Rabbanas, um, the PDF. If you don't have it, then inshallah, Sheikh Salah can send it. Or, um, you know, Hezbollah Azam is a great, um, you know, resource that it has like you know, a abridged version of just different du'as that you can read. The whole time in Mina, you want to spend your time preparing yourself for the next day. The next day, yes. For the Salahs and Mina? Yes. No, it'd be different. Every tent will have their own. Yeah, so every, every tent will have their own, their own jamaat that, that, that they'll read. Now, one thing to keep in mind that you, you will be Musafir. So Zohar, Asr, Isha will be uh, discounted too. Right? So you, you keep that in mind. Not combined, not combined like Qasr only. Yeah. Like shorten, but not combined. Just shorten, but you won't combine it. The next day, we're going to be combining our Salahs. After Fajr Salah, you're going to travel to Arafah. Once you get to Arafah, get some rest. Sleep. Right? Why? Because Wukuf doesn't start. Once you get to Arafah, the main time of Arafah doesn't start. The main time of Arafah starts after Zawal. Zawal is when the sun moves from its, from, from its peak. Once it moves from its peak, when Zohar time begins, that's when Wukuf of Arafah start. When, if you get there early morning, after Fajr, you, they, they move you to Arafah. Once you get there, rest up. It was Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ showered in um, Arafah before Zawal. And the reason why I say shower, rest up is... The next part is the main part of Hajj. The last thing you want to be is tired, or sleepy, or laying down, or anything else besides making dua. And the Prophet ﷺ, he went outside and made dua outside. So he left his tent and made dua outside. And Hadith says right here, at this point the Prophet ﷺ raised his hand so high that his, his underarms were visible. So. This is the main part of Hajj. Before, you, before the Zawal starts, again, um, get some rest. Now, on this day, Zuhr and Asr will be combined. You will combine Zuhr and Asr together, and each tent, the Imam will lead um, Zuhr and Asr together. You will not pray Maghrib there. Maghrib will be delayed and with Isha. And the whole purpose of this is the reason why Zohar and Asr is combined and Maghrib and Isha is combined, so that you have this gap of time to just do as much as ibadah as possible. And the best ibadah is to make dua, to do askar, um, you know, just engage yourself as much as possible um, there in, in, in Arafah. That is, a, like I said, that is the main part of Hajj. After Maghrib time, the wukuf of Arafah finishes. Then you can relax. Then you can, you know, sit down, um, wait until they call for your bus to come or your, it's your time to, to travel to Muzdalifa. Once you get to Muzdalifa, you will then pray Maghrib and Isha together in Muzdalifa. You pray Maghrib and Isha together, and then you start to collect stones. You start, you start to collect your stones um, 
in, in Muzalifa. The Prophet ﷺ, he spent the night in Muzalifa and he made dua in Muzalifa. Right? Um, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said the dua that weren't accepted in Arafah were then accepted in Muzalifa. So in Muzalifa, all you're doing is you know, collecting your stones. Now, how many stones to collect? For, okay, okay, let's uh, ask the question. Is it, is it 21, 49, 70? Minimum, minimum 70, you said? 21? What, what, which package is that? Sheikh, what do you think? Is that 49 or 70? So it d depends on if you are staying on the 13th or not. Yeah. So if you're staying on the 13th, if you're going to be in Min on the 13th, then you have to collect 70. If you're not staying on the 13th, then you're, you're, you're going to stone on the 10th, 11th, 12th, right? The 11th and 12th, you need 21, 21, and on the 10th, you need 7. So, but if your package is that you're staying in Min on the 13th, then you have to have 70. So you collect these um, pebbles in, uh, so all of this is happening on the night on, on, on the ninth of on the ninth of Zul Hijjah. You go spend the night in Muzdalifa. Now the the wukuf of Muzdalifa, the wukuf of Muzdalifa is a time between Fajr and sunrise. You know we said the the wukuf of Arafah is when from Zawal to Maghrib. The wukuf of Muzdalifa, the main part that you have to be there, is from um, Fajr time until the sunrise. That is the main part of Muzarifa. Right, so you spend the night in Muzarifa, you can collect your pebbles. If you are collecting, your, if you're staying in the 13th, then you want to do 30. If not, then you're going to be doing 49 pe pebbles. Right. So this is the plains of Arafah. You, if, if you're in the North American tents, the North American tents are actually very close to Jabal Rahmah. Where the picture right there, where the Prophet وسلم, he stood on this mountain and he made dua on the day of Arafah. If you're not in the North American tents, you're in the VIP tents, then you're going to be far from Jabal Rahmah, and that's fine. You don't need to go to Jabal Rahmah. If you do, Alhamdulillah, that's okay. Right? Masjid Nimra. Masjid Nimra is a main masjid. The Imam that will lead in Masjid Nimra, uh, huh? The Mufti, yeah. The Mufti that was the Mufti that was the lead in Masjid Nimra. They'll have a sermon. Again, you do not need to go there. Um, I actually suggest people don't even go looking for it. Why? Because it's really hot, really, really hot. It's only going to be Arabic, anyways, right? Yeah, it's only going to be Arabic. And half of Masjid Nimra is not in Mina, not in Arafah. It's in Muzdalifah. So, like, if you look at those, like, if you look right here, you see those yellow, that yellow sign. This is a yellow thing over there. That sign says. Arafah ends here, and half of the masjid is outside of Arafah. It's in Muzdalifah. So you're, you're actually not doing your wukuf. Better than that, stay in your tent, or outside of your tent. Make as much as dua as possible. This is right here, is what Muzdalifah looks like. In Mina, because you're there for an extended period of time, there are nicer tents. The tents have AC, the tents have a cooling system. In Arafah, because you're just there for you know, a gap of seven, eight hours, the tents might not be as fancy. Um, you know, I'm not sure how it's going to be this year. In Muzdalifah, because you're spending a night, there is no tents. You're sleeping in the open, um, open sky. What you want to do, again, I'm not sure how they, they plan to do it this year, but if you want to take some sort of sleeping bag, you know, that, that might be recommended, that has like a blow-up pillow. Um, all the years that I went, I, we never took a sleeping bag. We just take a sheet, put it down, find some cardboard, lay down it, and you have the best sleep. Open the sleep yeah, actually, this, this year the preparation is very, uh, like especially in Mina, preparation is very good, mashallah. I've seen the, yeah, the preparation in Mina, mashallah, the uh, upgraded, right? They pretty much have rooms and beds now, so it's not like before, in Abdullah. No. So, uh, I'm so sorry, Sheikh. Uh, for the brothers who are coming for Aisha, we do apologize. If you don't mind, can we just extend it for a few more minutes, please? Adnan? If you don't mind, please. There are, there are other things that, that we want to cover, inshallah. Um, the tenth of Zul Hijjah. Yeah. 
the tenth of Zulhijjah. In the tenth, in the tenth of Zulhijjah, after sunrise, you're going to leave Muzalifa. You're going to go back to Arafah. Now, on this day, there are a few things that you have to do. The order of these few things, many scholars say the order is not necessary. Some scholars say there is. If the order, you can't follow the order, that's fine. Right? What are the things that you have to do on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah? Now, keep in mind, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah is the day of Eid. It's Eid day. But for Haji, there's no Eid. Right? There's no Eid Salah that we, that, that we do. It's just a normal day for you. It's the most busiest day for you, actually. What you must do on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, number one, you're going to pelt shaitan. Seven stones and the biggest shaitan only. Right? The intention of this is not to just throw stones at a wall, but to understand that you're actually throwing stones at your own nafs, your own weaknesses, your own vices. You're cutting off this relationship with shaitan, this friendship with shaitan, by throwing each stone. So don't worry so much about throwing the stone, but worry about the, the emotion and feeling and the meaning behind it. Right? The dua that you read, all right, you say, Allahumma rajma li shaitan, rida uh, rahman wa rajma li shaitan. I'm doing it for the happiness of Allah and to uh, disgrace shaitan. As long as it falls within the, con the confines of the wall, that's fine. It doesn't even have to hit the wall. As long as it, it falls within, that's fine. If the stone f doesn't hit the wall and falls out, you can pick it up, but if a phone like, you know, goes in and then bounces out, then you shouldn't use that stone again. Seven stones, largest shaitan only. Make sure not to hit anybody. Yeah, that, right? yeah. That's for shaitan, not for your fellow Muslim, inshallah. So you, can, you can pick up any stones on the ground and throw it away from the car. If it hasn't been used. Right? If it hasn't been used. And that's why it's good to, you know, on the, in Muzdalifa, pick up some extra stones. Now, how big should the stones be? Right? The stones should be as the size of a chickpea. Make sure it's a stone and it's not cement. Right? Push it. A lot of times there's cement, you can just like crush it in your finger. Um, and the size of the chickpea, ideally, don't just take like huge boulders and like huge stones and like throw it. Um, make sure you're throwing a stone, you're not throwing a chappal or something like that. Um, seven stones, move on. Number two is sacrifice. Most likely, you will not be doing the sacrifice. You're going to pay, the, the Saudi government will take care of the udhiyah. You do not need to go to the slaughterhouse. They will take care of the udhiya. Um, previously, when there were groups, they would tell you that your udhiya is done, khalas, finished, and then you can cut your hair. Because there's no way for that communication, that's why we say that the order here is not necessary because there's no way to find out when your udhiya is done. Right? So this is the three things that you have to do on the 10th of Zulhijjah. Yes. So do they accept credit card, Sheikh, or uh, extra, should they take extra cash with them? For the it's a, is it including the packages? I think it's included. It is, right? Yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. Yay. <laughs> we're not honest, we're not sure. Sorry? <laughs> huh? Uh, that's a good so question. you can, because it's already included, that's taken care of. But if you want an extra one or something like that, then yeah, that's fine. You can ask somebody else, but you know, it's, it is doable. Right? Or if you want to have extras, then you can do this. This right here is what Jamarat looks like, the stoning of shaitan. Um, you, know, you actually don't get to pick which level you, that you go to. You automatically, based upon where your tent is, it automatically takes you to a level. It's a very amazing system that they have. Um, and you, that, that way it avoids any stampedes or any you know, um, or traffic. Right? My suggestion with this would be, is that once you get to uh, Mina, once again, rest up, take an umbrella, take some sort of, you know, wa some water, some, you know, whatever you need, and then go. If you're going from the North American tents, then keep in mind, you're going when it's really hot and you're walking an hour, an hour and a half from North American tents to uh, the Jamarat, right? And... The earlier you go, it's actually not good. The reason being is everybody else wants to go at that time. A few times, we, what we always did is that we delayed it. A few times that we went early, it was a worse experience. Why? Because everybody was there and it's a rush and you're just 
sweating out, sweating out, sweating out. So go ahead and delay it. You know, get some breakfast and th then go to Jamarat. Right? This is what the actual walls look like. There'll be three walls. On the first day, on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, you will only go to the last wall and you will pelt um, shaitan. When a person pelts shaitan, um, they will leave... Sorry, this is a different slide. This is oh, this is from Arab. When the person pelts shaitan, they are now out of the state of Ahram. You shave your hair. Everything is permissible except for relationships with your spouse. Right? You can change your clothes. You can put on perfume. Everything else is permissible. You can wear head covering. You can wear regular shoes. That's fine. Now, if you calculate how long you're going to be in Ahram, if you calculate how long you're going to be at home, the first time that you were at home from Saudi Airlines, right, until you get to um, Mecca, maybe 12 hours. 12 hours you were at home. The second time, you're going to wear the whole day on the 8th, the whole day on the 9th, and the 10th morning, you're going to, after you pelt, and after your sacrifice is done, you're going to take your haram off. So it's only two and a half days, the, the ihram of Hajj, that you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're going to be wearing. Should we stop? Uh, for uh, q and Are you done with Hajj? No, we have a real question. <laughs> okay. On the um, 11th day, right? So on the 10th, if possible, you want to do your uh, tawaf, uh, tawaf of Hajj, right? And we said that this is mandatory. It's called Tawaf of Ifada. You want to do this. You can do on the 10th, 11th, 12th, right? You have a few days. If you want to do it, you can do it any days. 10th will be the most busiest, right? Everybody will be there. There are so many times that I went on the 10th, and we, I started my tawaf, and after three rounds, I stopped because I was just standing in that same spot for two hours, the same spot for two hours. That's how many people there were. Inshallah, this year, because there's only a million people, only a million people, um, Maybe, you know, it might be less, but you don't have to do on the 10th. You can do on the 11th or the 12th as well. Yes? You can change your ahram. That's fine. As long as the second ahram is not fragranced. So, if, so what I usually do is I take one and a half. The bottom part is usually fine. The top part is kind of what gets sweaty. So I'll switch that out. Is that not with the ifada. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And any tawaf. Tawaf is always the same. Yeah. Mm. Yes, the tawaf will be followed. This tawaf, the say can be uh, pushed out. So let's say you do your tawaf and you it's really packed and you're just exhausted after it. You can do your say on the 11th or 12th as well. You pelt, you shave your head, you change your clothes, then um, then you go to Mecca, you perform your tawaf, say yes. So the tawaf is after you so you're not in You don't need to be in at home. If you can, if you don't change, if you don't shave your head, then yes, you can. But it's best to change. You shave your head, change. Again, let's say, for example, someone wants to you know, practice the, the order and their animal is not sacrificed. In that case, they will still be in ihram, and they will expose their shoulders, and then later on they would um, you know, wear regular clothes. But otherwise, you're wearing regular clothes, and you're, you're performing yeah, to It's better to just be relaxed, you know? Yeah. Just finish the ihram, and then we'll do it. Usually, no, no, the bus is, is a long distance. So there'll be buses. Um, let's say, that, for example, if there's somebody that um, has to get there sooner, right? In the case of there's a lady who, um, you know, won't be able to pray her salah, right? Or won't, sorry, she won't be able to do tawaf later on. She's going to exit purity. So that for her, she has to go immediately as soon as possible. And if you need to take a taxi or something like that, then you get that done as first thing in the morning. You want to pelt as soon as possible and get that taken care of so that you don't have to extend your ticket or pay um, a penalty for that, right? So this is the 10th of Zul the, 11th, the, the 10th of Zul Hijjah complete. On the 11th, there's only one thing to do, and that 11th and 12th, 11th and 12th, same, only one thing to do. All you're doing is pelting shaitan. You go 7, 7, 7 on the 11th, 
Similarly with the 12th, 7, 7, 7. If you stay in Mina for the 13th, then you have to pelt on the 13th as well. But if you leave, let's say you go to Medina or you come back to America, then you do not have to pelt on the 13th, right? So overview of Hajj, looking at everything together. Let me, oh, let me see if I can. Ihram, obligatory, it is Faraz. Tawaf al-Qudum, right? Um, you know, it's Sunnah. Again, we didn't talk about it because again, you're most likely going to be doing your, your um, Umrah um, or Tamatum. Rukuf of Arafa, that's mandatory. Rukuf of Muzdalifa, it's wajib. Stoning the big shaitan on the 10th, that is wajib. Sacrificing the animal is mustahab. Shaving and trimming your hair, again, that is wajib. Tawaf of Ziyara, also known as Tawaf of Ifada, the Tawaf of Hajj, that is obligatory. It will be followed with the Sa'i. Again, we said that that Sa'i can be um, postponed if need be. Pelting of Shaitan on the 11th, 12th, and 13th, all three of these are wajib. And the final thing is in Hajj, is before you leave Mecca, you have to perform Tawaf of Wida. One, one final Tawaf before you leave. Sheikh, uh, there is um, one question that we got on YouTube and I got it somewhere else. Um, about the difference of opinions and, you know, Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki regarding the types of Hajj and so on and so forth. Really, my advice is, wala jidala fil hajj. You know, no argument in, in hajj, which madhab is the most authentic, the most correct one. I would say, follow the local religious leader. Over there, they're going to assign someone. Most likely, most likely, they're going to be following the Hanbali school of thought. Most likely, but just follow your imam over there. Whoever is assigned, inshallah, follow them. Uh, I wish, Sheikh, we could uh, take more questions, but uh, unfortunately, time is up. I know that we needed much more time than that. But we have a WhatsApp group for ICF uh, community, inshallah, going for Hajj. Uh, please ask for, inshallah, uh, talk to me after Salah. I will, I will invite you to take your number, have you in the group myself. I'm also going, Sheikh Mubin is going to be with us. So while I'm there, inshallah, you can feel free, ask any questions. I will try to talk to, to you to see if you're around. Uh, you can feel free to ask any questions. If I'm not available, Sheikh Mubin is Hopefully, this is going to be watching, inshallah, the group as well to answer your questions. So we'll be with you, inshallah. Yes. So depending on what the mistake is, right? So let's say, for example, if you have a few hairs that come out or if you cover your head for a short period of time, in that case, the penalty would just be sadaqa. But let's say it's a larger penalty. You purposely put on perfume or you put on the itar, or you performed tawaf in the state of impurity, right? For tawaf, you, ha for tawaf, you have to have wudu. For say, you don't have to have wudu. But let's say you perform tawaf in the state of impurity, right? Um, you, you're, 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 not, you're in the state, you're in your cycle, and you have to perform tawaf. In that case, you have to sacrifice animal. Right. So, so there any, are different levels based upon what the mistake is. Anything, exactly. Anything that you're not supposed to do while you're in haram instead of haram, and you do it purposely, then you, basically the penalty will take place here. Right? Sheikh, last question. We don't want to forget, uh, because sisters always ask about the, you know, during the, if the ftaw vil ifada, if she is, if she has a monthly cycle during that time. So, and let's say her package ends there, like she really, like, she has to leave the, the you know, Saudi Arabia. So whether it's for your Umrah, if, if, if it's for your Umrah, then you need to plan your Umrah according to your cycle. Um, if the beginning days you're going to have your cycle, then you probably don't want to do Tamattu uh, Kiran. You just do Ifrat, right? So that way you're in the state of, you don't have to perform Tawaf in the state of impurity. If the Tawaf of Hajj, is done in the state of impurity, right? So some scholars say you don't even do it. You have to delay it. Other scholars say, no, you can actually go ahead and do it, but then you sacrifice the animal, you pay the, you, you pay the amount, and um, you, you exit the state of at home like that. So you can, again, perform it off in the state of impurity, but there will be a penalty of sacrificing an animal. So that's why I, that's why I said earlier, if you know that your cycle is going to start, then the first thing in the morning, go pelt, and um, head off to Makkah and do your do your um, do your tawaf. 
So this year, I think the, the Hajj is going to be expressed. So our Hajj seminar is pretty much the same as well. We Like everything else. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we made it express. Again, if you, uh, like we said uh, um, earlier, if you have any questions or just preparation, uh, if you reach out, um, I have like a packaging list that I usually share, um, you know, things that you need to take or you should take during Hajj. Inshallah, reach out to us and you know, we'll definitely And the group, make sure, inshallah, to join our group so we'll be together, inshallah, over there as much as we can. Anybody again fly on the 4th? I know there's one brother. 4th from Los Angeles, anybody? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, the sister. You have a question or you? Okay. What, okay. We're, I'm just waiting for two more days, two more days, and we're going to clear this WhatsApp group. Whoever is not going, we'll just remove them from the group, inshallah. So, okay. Jazakallah khair, folks. Again, Jazakallah you know, khair. we would love to sit and kind of explain it further, um, but because due to time, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your intention of hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take you safely, bring you back safely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all the hajj, you know, a hajj that's accepted, hajj maqbul. Um, we request you all to make dua for us, for our community, for the people of our community, for the management, for the masjid, and for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invite us all to Hajj as well. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala wa Can we all say, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharik laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa na'mata laka wal mulk la sharik laka. May Allah accept inshallah.